okay so in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to convert your AI response markdown into code so let's get started so if you don't know already whenever you ask some kind of question right like what is AI for example like this will give me a long text okay so let's ask this as you can see it is giving me the answer but if you look at all of this right you have these double asterisks and all of this stuff so what is this basically this is the markdown syntax okay so when you get this how do you convert this right there is a very simple way of doing this to convert this okay so for this you need to install two packages Here, I'm going to install a npm package called react markdown okay so npm I react dash markdown okay so I'm going to install this and I also need to install another package that is called remark gfm okay So this and you also need to install another package for syntax highlighting okay and I'll show you later in this tutorial what I'm going to do with the last one but the first two I'm going to talk about right now after they are done installing so just need to add one more which is react syntax it's mark dash gmf so I'm going to install all three of these packages and come back. So the package.json ended up reloading. So it should be in here. So if you are coming from previous tutorials, I have changed some of the code so that it's more clean and easier to understand because I've divided it into different components. So we need to go into the chat history component. Okay. And this is where we get what we get. Okay. So model is the one that we need to add this in. Okay. So I'm going to take this, cut it out and just add in markdown. And then just add this in and import this in so that's what you need to do okay so now the application is done reloading so I'm going to ask it the question what is AI and now you can see that this time when we got our answer we have like bold text and that's because it's automatically taking in the markdown syntax and converting that into code into like bold headings and p tags and all of that stuff and you can also see like line breaks before you did not see that okay so everything is on its own line so now i'm going to add in a plugin and this plugin is going to be the remark plugin okay and in this I'm going to add square brackets and now I'm going to put in the name of the plugin and it's been imported in I'm just going to save this and let's see the application has done reloading now I'm going to ask the same question again and now everything is more clear okay everything is on its own line it's divided into lists and all of that stuff okay so this is how you do this but let me ask you another question what if you get code in this right so let's say you asked it to give you some boilerplate HTML right so I'm going to say give me the boilerplate HTML template code Just copy this and I'm going to submit this I'm 
I should have asked for just the code, but as you can see, it has given me the code, but it is not highlighted, okay? And that is a problem. The reason why this isn't highlighted is because you do not get some default highlighting for your code by default to add something in to handle all of that, okay? So here, this is going to get a little complicated, but just follow along, okay? So I'm gonna separate this onto its own line first so that everything is clear. So here, what I'm gonna do now is use a property called components, okay? Inside of this, you need to add in brackets and then inside of this you can add in the name of the tag okay so when the markdown component looks at this it will see that this is code okay so it'll put it in the code tab okay this is in b tag actually let me just show you this so in the elements, you'll see that this is in a P tag with strong. And the same goes for this. this is a pre with a code tag in it. Okay. So we need to target this, the code tag. Okay. So to do this, what you are going to do is just add in this. And then inside of just add in the name of the tag code. And the same logic applies for like table because anything within a table will be in the table tab so just want to make that one clear and inside of this this will give you some props okay and just add in curly brackets and then inside of this you need to destructure the props first okay so, so constant is equal to props okay and inside of this you get a few different things okay one is children you get a lot of these but actually i'm just going to type it out because this is going to take too long to look at so class name this is important because this will give you some of the default styling it has already and the next one is node the node is basically like the data that you get okay so node and then i'm just saying give the rest okay this will be like the rest of the stuff that the prop has okay so next is going to be a constant that I will call match because we need this to match what type of language this is okay so what we're going to do is add in slash I could explain what this is like the slash language and all of that but basically when the component runs right we are going to add in something called syntax highlighting and when we do that what will happen is it will automatically add this and then dash and then it will add in in front of it like HTML or JavaScript or whatever language it is it'll automatically detect that so we are just using this to do like a check so just type in here and this is regex by the way so slash plus that's it and then we are using the execute Class name, pass that in. To add a slash here. Okay, now it's become regex. Okay, you need to add a opening and closing slash, I guess you can call these. And then what it's going to do is look at the class names. And if this syntax is a match, it'll return true or false. Okay, so next. And it could also be empty. Okay. This is just to avoid like um, some kind of error, this part, okay? So now that we have this, we have our props, we, ha we are matching the language, okay? So now what we're going to do is do a return. And this is where we're going to add our syntax highlighter, okay? So here, if the match is a success, it's true, then what we're going to do is do text highlighter. It 
didn't import it so I'm going to import this manually okay you need to import in two things import and from okay, so it's dark from react dash syntax highlighter and here I'm going to get prism as syntax highlighter okay and here I'm going to add react dash syntax highlighter and this I need to get this from a specific place in syntax highlighter so slash esm slash styles slash prism so I've gotten this and I'm going to pass this in so all of this is here and here what I need to do is add in the dot dot rest okay so here I'm going to add in the rest of the props okay that we get so I'm gonna add all of those in this next is I'm going to add in tag okay I'm basically saying the changes into a div okay next I'm saying children turn this into a string and add in children okay next is the language okay and extract that and give me whatever that language is okay so match okay The next is the style, which is just going to be dark. And here is the last thing we need to do, which is that, okay, if the match is true, then return this part. If it is not, then I want it to just return the code. And inside of this is going to be children. And here we are just adding the dot 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 rest of the props and also the class name what this is doing is it's basically saying that if this is code and it matches a certain language that is available for syntax highlighting then do all of this if it is not then run this part okay I didn't need to add that okay because this is not a function okay so I'm gonna save this and if everything worked correctly everything worked correctly you add this here submit the request as you can see we are getting the markdown syntax and we are also getting the code highlighting done if you're wondering why this is like this the reason for that is that I've added a maximum width to this and that's why it's like containing it inside of this if I go into my CSS right and in this I have like the maximum width is 80 so I think if I remove this it's gonna be fine so let's see yeah it's it's still um, like the box is just too small that's why it's kind of like going out of bounds a little bit okay but you can see like the answer you you get the point here
okay and there are other like teams as well for example so let's do vs dark plus let's do this let's say this As you can see, this is like the default styling that you get with VS Code, for example. So, I hope you like this tutorial. Subscribe to the channel, give this video a like, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.